Hello crafters, this is Yana Smokula. Welcome back to my channel. It's been ages since I made a gatefold card and I thought it was time to revisit this cool card type on my channel. It is an easy one to make and the best part about a gatefold card is the wow on the face of the recipient when they open this kind of card because it's so different from the traditional card design. Gatefold cards are actually rather easy to make. The finished size of the card is going to be A2, so four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And to make a gatefold card, you're going to need a sheet of cardstock, of a letter sheet of cardstock. I'm using sea glass cardstock from Simon Says Stamp, just because I want my card base to have color to it. So I first use my paper trimmer and I cut my cardstock sheet in half, so to five and a half by eight and a half inches. I'm going to score this piece of paper at four and a quarter inches, fold it and use my scoring tool to reinforce that fold. So basically right now I have created an A2 card base. We're going to need to add another panel to this to make it into a gatefold, but we will do this a little bit later. As first, I want to add something to this card. Now my idea is I want to die cut a circle opening. So the front panel of my card is going to have a circle opening, a window that will go into the second panel, the, the second gatefold panel of this card. Right now I'm just picking a circle die that works best for this card size and I'm going to go ahead and die cut that in my die cutting machine. Now, when you die cut something directly into the card base and when you are using cutting plates that have been well loved and well used, and I'm sure all of us, all of our cutting plates look like this. I know I don't change my cutting plates very often, so they usually look quite old and yucky. And when you use these older cutting plates, they can leave indentations on your paper. Now, to prevent that from happening, I find I can add a sheet of scrap paper. This is just a thin printer paper. So I can add that onto my plate. Then I can place whatever I'm cutting and that will prevent my paper from getting all of these cut marks on the back side of the paper. Now, because I want to cut the window opening just in the front of my card, just in that one panel, I have opened my card base and placed it like so onto my panel. Now I'm also going to add another panel of scrap paper to protect the front of my card, again, from getting scratch mark from the cutting plates. And having all of that, I'm going to send it through my die cutting machine and cut that window opening out. Let's take a look. Looks perfect. The back looks really nice. I don't have any cut marks except just around that circle, but that's fine. I'm not really concerned about it. Now, I also want to add some foiling to this card. I want to foil a sentiment on the front of the card and the sentiment says sending birthday wishes. And I want to foil a sentiment on the back of the card and this is going to say handmade just for you or handmade for you. To foil both of these, I'm using a new mini glimmer sentiment set from Spellbinders. And I'm going to foil both of these in mad gold foil. And I'm just going to use my Spellbinders Quick Trimmer to cut little pieces of foil and foil these sentiments on my card base. Now, it is a little bit tricky to position skinny sentiment strips like these straight onto the card. I always struggle with this. I end up having my sentiments crooked. So whenever I need to do something like this, I like to use some sort of a grid mat or a grid paper pad underneath my card base so that I can use the grid lines on that surface to help me align my sentiment. I mean, I'm also using my hinge method. So once I've aligned the sentiment, I taped it down with a piece of tape. So I created a sort of like a hinge with the tape. I've added my foil under the plate and then I used another piece of tape to secure both the plate and the foil in place. I'm going to do the same for the back of my card for that handmade for you sentiment. So again, using the grid lines on my cutting mat to make sure it is aligned, I'm adding my foil and then using another piece of tape to secure everything in place. With that done, I'm going to foil these sentiments using my Glimmer hot foil system. Now, 
I can't fit both of them at the same time because the surface of the Glimmer hot foil system isn't large enough to accommodate both the front of the back of the card. So I'm going to foil them separately. So I've foiled the front first. Now I do have a little bit of a yucky transfer from my plates onto the inside of the card, but that's fine. I will erase that later using a pencil eraser. And you know what? I was actually surprised in the past when I just started to make my cards. Whenever I would get a little booboo -boo like that, I would get so discouraged and I would have to start over because I didn't think I could clean that up. But once I just tried using a pencil eraser and I was surprised because it really took care of that problem and it took care of that problem quite easily for me. So now whenever I get a little mark like that, a little transfer where it's not wanted, I do not get disappointed. I just keep on working on my card and then I use a pencil eraser or a sanding eraser if the pencil eraser doesn't work to erase that and that works really well. I also foiled the sentiment on the back and as you can see my foil actually moved. It shifted a little bit so the sentiment only foiled partially. Now because I used my hinge method and because my plate is still actually attached to the paper, I'm going to cut another piece of foil. This time I'm going to be a little bit smarter and I'm going to cut a slightly larger piece of foil, a slightly wider piece, and I'm going to refoil this. So I'm just adding another, a fresh piece of foil, taping it in place and going to pop it back into my glimmer to refoil and it refoiled perfectly. I don't have to start over for this card. I do have a little bit of overfoiling and that can be easily taken care of again with a pencil eraser or with a sanding eraser if the foil doesn't want to be removed with a pencil eraser. But I usually find that the pencil eraser does the trick nicely. And here I also use my eraser to remove, to create the gatefold card, we need to create another A2 card and then adhere the two cards together. So I'm going to use the leftover piece of cardstock that I have from cutting my letter sheet in half. I'm going to score it at four and a quarter inches to create an A2 card. So this is creating an identical card that I made previously. And I'm going to adhere the two panels together to create the gate fold. Now we need to trim the cardstock a little bit because there is a bit of overhang. I'm going to use my paper trimmer and cut about eighth of an inch off to make sure my card can open and close nicely and the cardstock panels are not interfering with the other panels and are not preventing the card from closing. Next, I'm using double-sided tape and I'm just going to stick the two panels together like so to create that gatefold. It's super easy. You just need one full letter size sheet of cardstock to make a gatefold card. Next comes the most fun part. We're going to use some florals to decorate our card. Now, these are the two new die sets from Spellbinders and they are fantastic. They are my absolute favorite, I would say, is floral dyes lately. Now, one set is the Simply Perfect Layered Blooms. It's that larger set, the one at the top and on the left. And the smaller set, the one on the right and on the bottom, is called the Mini Blooms in Sprigs. These two sets can be used separately, but they actually work really nice together. The little florals complement each other and they allow you to create different floral arrangements. I went ahead and did all of my die cutting off camera. I have a little palette dish from Fence Jumper's Journey here and I pre-sorted my die cuts by color to make it easier to assemble things. Now there are different ways how the flowers can be assembled. The flowers are somewhat abstract and that allows you for multiple combinations. There isn't a set rule, a set way to assemble the flowers. There is a PDF available that shows you some possible combinations, but because of the nature of these die cuts, because of the, their design, you have a lot of freedom as to how you can assemble these florals. Before I do any decorating, I remembered I wanted to add some more foiling. I wanted to use one of the new Spellbinders Duo Line Glimmer foil plates. This is basically a border and I wanted to foil a circle border around that 
circle opening on my card. So here I used the pencil and I traced that die cut circle onto the card base. Next, I'm using one of the glimmer plates from the dual line circle glimmer hot foil plate set from Spellbinders. And I'm going to foil that in the same matte gold foil on this flap. So I have a little bit of foiling on the first flap. The sentiment is there. Then on the second flap, I'm going to add that foiled circle. And then on the back of the card, we have a sentiment that says handmade for you. Now you don't have to do this. You don't have to add the foiling. You can totally skip it. But I wanted to have something there that would help me contain my flowers or frame my flowers in a way. So that's why I'm adding that foiled circle there. Once again, I used my hinge method to tape the glimmer plate in place, and I made sure to use that pencil circle as a guide. I cut my foil to size, and I just basically followed the same glimmer hot foil machine instructions that I usually do, and I foil this on my background. Now here's what the construction for this looked like. I had to open my card up entirely so that I didn't have any extra card stuck there so that the pressure wouldn't be too big or too high, too strong, and I wouldn't get overfoiling. I also added a piece of scrap paper to protect my card base from getting any foil transfer. And that worked really nice because, well, I knew I had some foil transfer before, so this time I was being much more careful. And let's take a look. It did foil well. It's not perfect. I did have a little bit of underfoiling, but I think I can work with that. And any underfoiling can be covered with the floral. So I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Now that that's done, I can use a pencil eraser and just erase that pencil line that I used as a guide. So here's a look at the card base of the gatefold card base that I have. Now it's time to decorate it. You can decorate your gatefold card base any way you like. I really wanted to use these florals. I find them very inspiring. I actually shared another card on my blog not too long ago created with the same florals, but it was a slightly different type of card. It was a mini slimline card and the florals were added to a dark background. And I just love the way it turned out. You can see the picture of the card here. Then you can find more information about that project on my blog or on my Instagram account. So the next step is floral assembly. I'm first going to assemble my florals in some of the leaves. And once I have that done, we're going to use those newly created die cuts to decorate our card. Now, my favorite part about this die set or these both of these die sets are these sprigs. So you have the larger and the smaller sprig, one in each set, and you have different options as to how you can decorate it. Now, these die cuts help you make layered flowers. So it's not just a one layer flower. You can add different layers. You can build blooms. You can uh, use different cardstock colors to create multicolor flowers. So you have lots of options. And it's a very clever die set. And again, the florals are really nice and dainty. The size is perfect for pretty much any size of card you make. I've already made an A2, I've made a slimline and a mini slimline, and I'm sure these will work just as well for four bar cards too. So here I assembled a couple of sprigs. I used different die cuts for each and you can see the different sizes. You have many different die cut options in this set. Some are meant to go together, but then you can get really creative and decorate your flower centers in different ways. You can layer different layers, different die cuts for unique and unexpected flowers. And you can really go to town with this die set, creating all sorts of different flowers. I find it easier by doing some prep work ahead of time. So I start by pulling out the colors of cardstock that I want to use. So I start by selecting a color palette for my card. Then I select the colors of cardstock that I want to use for my die cutting. Then I do all of my die cutting. Often I would die cut all of the florals from one color cardstock and then all of the florals from the other color cardstock. Or if I know that I want to use a particular color of cardstock just for a specific floral, I'll just use that for that and so on. So I batch things. I separate this process into individual tasks and that makes it, I don't know, I think it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit faster. Now this does give me a lot of leftover images because I'm just die cutting ahead of time. I'm not really sure how many pieces I need, 
But having extra die cuts allows me to make more cards, which is always fun. So I die cut all the pieces, then I assembled uh, various flowers for my card. And then once I was happy with the number of die cuts and the florals assembled, I started to decorate my card. Now, the card base kept opening up on me. It didn't want to stay closed. I think I needed to crease those folds a little bit better. So I used a piece of double-sided tape on the inside of the card to temporarily close it shut. This allowed me to peacefully work on that inner circle, on that second flap of my gatefold card. And I just basically played with different florals, with different images, until I had the floral arrangement that I liked. At first, I only planned to decorate the inside of the card, but I also felt like it would be a good idea to decorate the outside of the card as well. So here I'm using glue as well as foam adhesive squares to adhere a couple of florals on the outside of the card, framing that circle opening. So I want to have a floral cluster in the bottom left corner, and then I'll add another a slightly smaller cluster in the top right corner to balance things out. You can add as many or as few flowers as you like. You can create an entire card background covered just with the florals, or you can use these florals just as an accent. It's completely up to you, and that's the beauty of these die cuts. They can be used in so many different ways. I tried not to use too much foam adhesive, especially on that second flap, because I did want my card to open and close easily. I didn't want it to be too bulky, so I was kind of careful about the amount of foam adhesive I'm using. I am used to using lots of foam adhesive squares. I do like my die cuts and my cards, dimensional and pop top, but I was being very careful on this card and I was trying to make Sure, I do not use too much foam adhesive, and for the most part, for most of the die cuts, I just used glue. Now, this is actually new glue that Spellbinders now carries in their store. It's also available in other places. It's the Barely Arts glue. And what I really like about this glue is that fine tip nozzle and the fact that it comes with a pin to help you close the nozzle when you're not using it. I've already had my glue for about a month and it did not clog. I didn't have any problems with it. So I really like it. And the glue is actually kind of runny, so it's not very thick. It's quite, I would say, the, quite the perfect consistency to help you assemble the die cuts or assemble little pieces and adhere things onto your cards. So here's a look at how the card looks like with the florals adhered. You can open and close it. You have the space on the inside of the card once you open the second flap to write a personalized message and it is hidden so you can't see the message from the outside of the card even though it's a window card. So that's the benefit of creating that gatefold design. I felt like this card needed a little bit extra something, so I went and looked through my stash for some sort of embellishment that I could use as a flower center and as an accent for this project, and I discovered these gorgeous jewels from Pretty Pink Posh. Now, Pretty Pink Posh has these jewels in a variety of colors. These, I believe, are either ivory or white, and they look fantastic. The minute I added these jewels to my card, it really took this project to a whole different level and you can see all of that beautiful sparkle as I tilt my card in the light here. I'm just going to remove that little piece of tape that I used to hold the second flap in place and well my card is ready to be gifted. I, I love the way it turned out. It wasn't easy to make. It's, it wasn't that hard. It was just a little bit time consuming especially doing all of that die cutting. Now I did have a lot of the flowers left over once I finished my main card, so I, I thought why not make another card and this is going to be a much simpler one. So I used a couple of glimmer plate sentiments. These come from the same set that I used for my main card. So I just foiled simple sentiments on the front of A2 card bases. I have one here that says happy birthday and then another one with a different sentiment that I didn't actually quite get to finish, but I'm hoping I'll get to finish it a little bit later. Now, seeing how I had all of these other floral die cuts, I decided I had enough to create at least another card. So what you see me do now is I'm just playing with a floral placement and I'm arranging all of these flowers on my card front, creating a floral 
frame around the sentiment. So I went to create a floral background, a floral pattern on the front of the card surrounding that dainty sentiment in the center. So the way I like to do this is I first plan the placement of the images. And once I'm happy with that, for the most part, I don't always finish the entire pattern. I just need to get myself started. I just need to place some of the larger pieces. And once I'm happy with that, I go ahead and I use some sort of adhesive, either foam adhesive or glue to stick the elements down and make sure everything is adhered so that I don't accidentally mess it up. Now, I love these floral die sets because you also have the little florals in here. So not just the big size flowers, you do have several larger size florals in this set, but you also have lots of little florals that can be used to fill in any gaps on your background. Like you see here, I have a little pink flower and the little yellow flower. And here I'm just adding the little blue flower and those are perfect for filling in the gaps on the background. Now to finish this card I also added the jewels to the flower centers and to the gaps in the pattern and I love the way it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and hopefully maybe inspirational. And I hope you'll give this idea a try with either these new dyes from Spellbinders or whatever floral dyes you have in your stash. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.